In this video, we're going to be doing soldering. So we will be starting out with a tool check so that everybody knows what we'll be using today. Our most obvious and most important tool is going to be our soldering iron. You want a soldering iron that has a tip temperature of at least 1000 degrees, 1100 is better. The next thing that we want to look at are two different types of solder. This one is 6040, which means 60% tin and 40% lead. That's a really good solder, especially if it's a virginal solder, hasn't been reconstituted. This one is actually a little bit better for copper foil work because it has 63% tin. Um, which means that it will set up much faster and make it much easier to get a good bead. When you're working with copper foil, you always want to use a liquid flux, not a paste flux. And this is a pretty aggressive flux. It's called Novican. I'm just going to pour some into a cap right here and get the rest of it out of the way so that you can see what I'm doing. I'm using just a cheapo little flux brush. And when I put it on, I'm really going to scrub it on. I'm not going to just lay it over the top. I'm going to scrub it on. You'll see a color change in your copper foil as you scrub this on. Once you've done everything, even the sides, the very first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to tack everything together. And again, I'm going to be using my 6337 instead of my 6040 get that out of the way. And when you're tack soldering, it doesn't have to be pretty at all. All you want to do is just tack the pieces together, hence the name. Once they're all tacked together, then what you can do is you can remove any pins or any kind of bars, anything that's going to get in your way, just get rid of it. After everything is tacked, we're going to do what's called a flat solder. Flat solder takes very little solder. All it is is you're basically just filling in any voids on your piece at all. If you have any gaps, if you have um, any kind of weirdness that you just want to create an even playing field with this. So it's really just changing the color of your foil so that it's all silver, doesn't take a lot of solder, and notice as I'm doing it, I'm moving quickly. I'm not trying to move real slow, I'm just quickly going along, and again, if I have a gap, I'm going to fill it in so that when I go back to the important stuff, which is the bead soldering, everything will be level. So now the entire piece is flat soldered. Once the flat soldering is done, you're going to notice I'm going to hold the soldering iron at a completely different angle. The way that the solder flows is it follows this wedge. It's like a little pie wedge here. So if you put the solder on the back of the pie wedge and let it melt, the iron should be down right on the piece and we're trying to do what's called a bead solder now. Notice it's super slow, painfully slow. As I'm moving along, I'm adding solder to the back. If there's solder that tends to pool around the back of the wedge, I just stop adding. And when I finish a line, I pull off over the glass. Let's look at it again. It's also a lot easier if you have whatever the line is that you're running. If you have that kind of parallel with your hand, that makes it much easier. So I'm going to, again, move perfectly slow. I'm going to allow the solder to melt in where I just started. I'm going to add to the back of the wedge, and I'm going to hold the iron up high. It's slow. It's really slow. As I'm seeing the solder pool around the back of the iron, I'm going to stop adding because I have enough. And when I get to the end, instead of running off the glass, I'm going to run off over the glass. As you're beading, really the most important thing is to keep your iron down on the glass and 
move slowly. Here's the most common thing that people do when they are starting to solder. They do what's called feathering, like this. You're never gonna get a nice smooth bead when you're doing that because you're not allowing the solder to melt. The other thing is people will float their iron way without touching, way above what they're doing and just kind of put down pieces, which is fine, but again, you're never gonna get a nice smooth line doing it that way. If it looks lumpy bumpy like that, one thing you can do is you can go straight up and down, touch the area that you don't like, move it back and forth a little bit, and then pull off over the glass. And you'll see the difference right away. So again, if you are in an area you don't like it, it looks ugly, straight up and down. Notice the angle of the iron, straight up and down, move back and forth, and then pull off over the glass. All right, I'm gonna go up here and get this last line. And the thing about soldering is that you can, I mean, you can just kill it. You can just keep going and going and going and going and going. You've got, you can go back in as many times as you want. The only thing that I would caution about is that you don't want to go into the same area over and over again because it'll get too hot and you might get a heat crack. So if you're not liking an area, just allow it to um, cool a little bit and then you can go right back in. Once you're pleased with the front and you think that it looks pretty good, you can always come back to it, remember. You can flip it over and start the whole process over again in the back. Okay, so the last thing that we'll do is beading the edge. Because you've pre-tinned on the front and the back, when you add solder to this edge, it's going to wrap around and it's going to make a nice little strong C-channel all the way around your piece. When you're doing this, you just want to flex the edge first and have your solder someplace so that you can just pull a little bit off at a time. If you've got little solder balls or something, you can pick those up. And again, with this one, what you're gonna be doing to achieve it is you're just trying to achieve a tiny little bit, maybe a half inch at a time. I'm just pulling a little bit of solder off and I'm kind of pecking at it. Notice the angle of the iron, it's straight up and down. And I'm just kind of pecking up and down only trying to achieve a little bit at a time. If you try to achieve more than just a tiny little bit, it's just gonna fall off. So don't do that. The other important thing is don't solder over your hand. So when you get to the point where you're at, where you're holding it, turn it around. When you get to the very end of the piece, stop and you'll end up with a bead on that edge and then when you get to the curve it's a little tricky you have to really pay attention and try to achieve even a smaller area because it's on a curve gravity is going to want to take it one way or the other so when you do it now what you're going to do is just set your sights on as little as a quarter inch at a time. This is where the higher tin content solder, again, really is handy because it sets up so fast. You don't have to wait for it to solidify before you change your angle of your piece a little bit. Notice I'm holding my angle, my, I'm still holding my iron straight up and down, 
and I'm only trying to do a little bit at a time. I'm really keeping a handle, a visual on the way that the solder is flowing so that I know that I'm not holding it one way or another and gravity is going to take over. Once you get to the top part, you want to switch so that you're not soldering over your hand. Give that a little bit of flux. Sometimes as you're soldering, the flux will evaporate and you just have to add a little bit more. If the solder is sticking to everything, to the glass, to everything, then you need more flux. So once you get to the end of your curve and you're happy with it, you're going to keep going all the way around. You'll then attack the next curve, the next flat area, and then the very bottom. Just remember each time that you're doing a new edge, don't solder over your hand. Once you've done all your edges, voila, you're done.